folks. He's here. Amen. It may be too hard for him. You may think it is, but it isn't. God's able to fix anything. He'll fix it for you. All you've got to do is ask and believe. Things have happened that have jeopardized the marriage. 
and their family. And I have three grandchildren there, 14, 12, and 10. And I just, they just mean a lot to me.
folks dig down deep and he, I'm sure he's ready. He's going to bless us all if, if we'll get in. Just tonight, would you just lift your hands up to Jesus? Yes. That's how you came. Yes. Lift your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallel
this afternoon, uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, and so I'm just going to obey Him if that's all right. Amen. 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 And just see what the outcome will be. If you would, in honor of the Word tonight, you don't, you don't have a clue who I am, but you, I'm asking you to honor the Word. Will you turn with me to the book of St. Luke, chapter number 13? I feel a spirit of revival. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter number 13, a very familiar scripture. I'm sure you've heard it preached before, but you haven't heard me preach it. <laughs> Luke chapter 13, and I need your prayer tonight. Just uh, a couple of, I, I preached Sunday in Richmond, and uh and then Monday, I, I had a couple of days off, and so I'm, I don't. My daughter, she got me a hotel room in Springfield, and I said I'm just going to go and just crash a couple of days because uh, I travel so much, and I was just going to go crash a couple of days, and when I I checked in the hotel. I got under an, a physical attack, literally attack, and uh, and I I said you are lying, stinking Amen. devil. I gotta be in Bolivar on Wednesday night. You ain't gonna stop me. Amen. prayer tonight. Yes. If you will, after I, I read my scripture, I'm going to have you stretch your hand, but I have a word from God, and he will strengthen me to the end. Yes. Yes. So, in the book of St. Luke, I, I'm on the clock. I don't know what time I have to be through tonight. But, <laughs> oh, you don't want to say that to me? <laughs> it's obvious that you haven't ever been in a service of mine before. Amen. But anyway, I'm going to start in verse number 10. And he was referring to Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit. Mm. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit. Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. The, the, the number 18 tonight is the number for bondage. Oh God. Oh God. She had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. I like to say it something like this. She couldn't straighten up. Come on. Yeah. Amen. When I was a small boy, my mama would look at me and say, Steve, you better straighten up. Yeah. Come on, y'all ain't going to help me. Yeah. 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 She couldn't no wise lift herself up. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. I'm going to speak on that here in a second, but that 
in itself utterly amazes me in the fact that he did not consider her condition. You see, you got to understand tonight of uh, uh, what I'm sharing with you in the scripture, brother uh, goes up, is an unsolicited miracle. Come on. Amen. Oh, y'all. I said it's an unsolicited yeah. miracle. She didn't ask for a miracle. Right? Yeah. This is an unsolicited. But when Jesus sees us in the condition that we are in, although it may be unsolicited on our part, he's going to step into the middle of the affairs of men and perform the miracle that's needed in the I'm feeling better already. <laughs> and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was straight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, without hesitation she was straight and glorified God and the ruler of the synagogue uh, you know those religious people that are always criticizing a move of God and the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because of Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite! Yeah. 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 I want to ask you a, a question. Have you ever wanted to look at somebody and say, Oh, nobody going to be real with me tonight. That's why I keep this look at you. I don't know what a brother talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That person who gets on your last nerve. Have you ever wanted to look at somebody and say, Thou hypocrite! But instead, you just look at him and say, you know. <laughs> and he answered and said, thou hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass on the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman Being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan had bound, lo, these eighteen years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. Sure you were. Yeah. <laughs> and all the people rejoiced for the glorious things which were done by him. Yeah. Now hold on, hold on, I'm not hurry. I want to preach a few moments on the subject. On the subject, God is about to straighten it out. Oh, come on. I heard some prayer requests earlier. Somebody in this building needs God to straighten it out. Somebody in this building needs your oh, house. Straighten out. Somebody needs your body to straighten out. Somebody's got a job situation. You need straighten out. Somebody's got a marriage. They need straighten out. I come on a Wednesday night on the last day of January of this new year to tell somebody God's about to straighten it out. If you need God to straighten it out. 
in this service because of the fact there may be somebody who is sitting in the service tonight who has received a word from the Lord. There may be somebody in this very building tonight who has received a prophecy from the Lord. I've received a word of knowledge from the Lord. And, it, and then you may have received that five years ago or eight years ago or six years. I don't know how long ago that you may have received that word from the Lord. And as soon as that word was spoken over, over, over your life that you sensed in your spirit for sure that that was a word from the Lord and that individual had heard from the Holy Ghost. But I'm here to help you tonight to understand although it hasn't happened in your time frame. Although tonight that child isn't saved yet. Come on now. Or that husband isn't set free yet. Or that you haven't received your financial blessing as of yet. I'm here to help you tonight to tell you that you continue holding on unto the word of God. Do not allow the enemy to steal your blessing. Do not allow the enemy to steal your promise. Do not allow the enemy to steal the word of the Lord out of your spirit, out of your heart. If it was a true word of God, he is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it and will he not perform it? Don't you let the uh, passage of time hinder the fact that it was from God uh, and that you're going to receive exactly what He promised you you would see. Uh, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I have to share with you tonight that delay is not denial. Come on. That's Thank God. Come on, I said delay is not denial. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's been delayed, it does not mean it's been denied from you. So, first of all, in that in this particular text, I want you to see that it offers hope to 
to those who have been long bound. But second of all, uh, I may get in some trouble here. But second of all, I see that this text offers insight for the need in this church today. And I'm not referring to I'm not referring to this particular church tonight as I am the church. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the church around the world. Uh, as I read this particular scripture tonight, it offers insight for the need of deliverance yes. ministry. Yes. I knew I wouldn't get a lot of amen. Because deliverance ministry is something that uh, that we don't really want to talk about. Uh-huh. It's something that, yes, we know there may be those that are in our services on Sunday that need deliverance, but it's it, it, if you're going to have a church, can I get into this tonight? If you're going to have a church that operates in deliverance ministry, it's not cute. It's not purity. It is not, uh, as I said, it's not... Uh, Pretty. It, it, sometimes it can be messy. Sometimes it's not eloquent. Come on, somebody. Uh, at, at the beginning of this last year, each each year I start the year on a long fast. And at the beginning of this last year, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, and He said, uh, He said to me. Beginning of this year, you're going to start seeing an increase in demonic activity in your services. In your services. You're going to begin to see an increase in demonic activity in your services. Because, 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 well, the enemy hates he hates deliverance ministry. I said he hates deliverance ministry tonight. But I'm here to say to you tonight, Amen. If you take out if you take out deliverance ministry out of the New Testament, you take out a good part of the New Testament. Are y'all listen to me. Jesus operated in a deliverance ministry. Well, I don't know about your Bible, but I read in my Bible. He says, in my name you will cast out that. I'm not saying 
This amen. This lady here was possessed by a, a demon, but she, she was oppressed yes. by a demon spirit. Yes. How do we know that? Because Jesus said yes. it's a spirit yes. of infirmity. Yes. Yes. Deliverance ministry is so needed in the church today to see those that are in shackles and chains set free by the power of all my God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to say something right here as I read this scripture this afternoon. I talk to myself. I can but I can relate to her. Oh God. Yeah. I can relate to her. Yes, and I know that you are looking up here and you're saying, how can you say that you can relate to her and you're spying straight? Mm -hmm. How can you say that you can relate to her and you don't have curvature of the spine? Absolutely right. I do not have covered her of the spine but I have had covered her of the heart come on come on come on I have had covered her of the spirit I have been broken oh hallelujah I said I have been broken my heart has been broken. My spirit has been broken. Oh, but just like her, I'm happy to say today, amen, that every time he saw me, Jesus saw me, and he understood the situation I was in, and he said, I'm not going to leave you in that shape. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit who is the comforter has come. And he's coming to you in the middle of your situation. Come on, somebody. I'm going to tell somebody God to run the straight out. I'm going to tell somebody the comforter has come. He has come into the middle of your problem. He has come to the middle of your situation. Receive the night from the comforter. I believe tonight, let me hurry, let me hurry. I believe tonight without a shadow of a doubt, this text offers insight into the multiplicity of reasons for illness. She had a spirit of infirmity, but sickness can be caused by it can be caused by genetics, yeah. the environment, yes. accidents, yeah. a diet, yeah. and it can be caused by the demonic. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to hurriedly to talk to you a few moments tonight. I will not have the time to preach all of this tonight. But I would like to take a few moments tonight and to talk to you tonight about the lady. I want tonight to talk to you about this particular lady. How that she was in church and even though she was so, she was so physically deformed. She was almost bent in two. In the book of St. Luke, chapter 13 and verse 11 says, Behold, there was a woman who for 18 years had had a sickness caused by a spirit, and she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. But yet she continued on in God. 
and was faithful to his house. Yes. Come on. Glory to God. Her um, her life is an indictment against the people who still want to use a COVID as an excuse to not come to church. No, 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 no that's all right. I may not ever be asked that, but I'm going to make the Holy Spirit. Is an indictment against people that will use every excuse in the book to not attend church on Sunday. Her life is an indictment against every person who will use anything at all to not attend church, but. I mean, uh, but they cannot find an excuse, to, uh, or I should say, they're hunting for an excuse to eat out. They're hunting for an excuse to go to Walmart, but they, nobody's going to me. But they can't attend church. I don't care how much uh, sanitizer you have for them. I don't care how many masks. I don't care if you said 18 feet from them. Amen. They are just looking for every excuse in the world to not attend the house of God. But not this woman, Pastor David. This woman said, I'm going to the house of God. It's the Sabbath. It'll be hard for me to get ready. It'll be a difficult task for me to get ready. I'm completely bowed over to Together. I'm going to have to help myself to dress myself, to bathe myself. It's going to be a task to go to church, but I don't care. i got to be in the presence of God. I've got to get to the presence of God. I've got to get in the presence of God. And I may walk past houses of people that's got it all together. I may walk past the houses of people that are totally healthy and whole that don't care about the Sabbath. But God's been too good for to me. God's been too good to me. Although I can't straighten up, I'm going to God. She continued on in God and was faithful to his house in spite of great physical adversity. This is the amazing thing tonight. I'm going to sit down a minute. Here, here is the here is the ultimate amazing thing tonight. I saw it. Is it she came to church even though she had no expectation of deliverance? Jesus' earthly ministry was only three and a half years. Amen. She had had the spirit of infirmity 18 years, which means for 14 and a half years, she went to the house of God. And even on the day that he called her out, it was an unsolicited miracle. She wasn't there because that Jesus was there because she couldn't lift herself up. She went to God's house not because that there was a hope of Jesus being there. She went to his house because of her commitment. She came because she was faithful to God. And she was a woman of God. And yet she was bound 
many years. She was called a daughter of Abraham and not simply a Jew. I believe the Spirit used this phrase to help us know that she was a woman of faith and yet she was physically bound. Yes. And you say, how can this be? Come on. Right. You ask. Amen. <laughs> I know I'm going to get into some stuff right here, but that's good. How I roll. Uh, you got to understand that Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham. To be called a daughter of Abraham would be today to be called a daughter of faith. Yes, yes. And that day, it would have been to call be called a daughter of faith. But there's something you need to understand tonight about this particular scripture is that Abraham is called the father of faith to be called the daughter of faith is to be called a daughter I mean to be called a daughter of Abraham is to be called a daughter of faith but here's what I want you to understand. I want to help us understand this tonight. To be a person of faith does not mean that you have faith in all areas. I'm going to help you tonight. To be a person of faith does not mean that you have faith in all areas. Here's what I want to say about that. You know, uh, you know, all of us, we know about Abraham. When I was a boy, we say, Father Abraham. And, okay, okay. You don't say that. I got to prove it, y'all. I heard somebody was about to kick you into it, y'all. No, you just say that. I need to prove it. Father, and stop. I don't want to talk to you tonight about Father Abraham. Uh, the father of faith. I want to talk to you about Abraham, Abraham of the liar. Oh, 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 what, what, did I hear? Wait a minute. Did I hear that preacher right? Did he say Abraham? The liar, L-I-A-R? Yes, I said Abraham the liar. What? Are you serious? The father of faith? the father of faith, yeah, the father of faith Abraham, yeah. who lied about his wife, Sarah. Amen. Yeah. What says to me that Abraham, oh, Abe, oh, oh, father Abe, uh, he says to Sarah, who, who, who says something to me about Sarah, which says to me that Sarah, she must have been. A pretty good looking woman for him to say to Sarah, don't look, Sarah, I want you to tell that king that you're my sister. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you, 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 you see, in Arkansas, that wouldn't be a big deal, but. <laughs> but I'm going to be in Arkansas tomorrow. I'm stop. I can say that tonight because I'm in Arkansas. But Abraham says to Sarah, lie and say you're my sister and I had not the, and if not the king had been someone who had a dream and said, don't touch her. Because if you knew, I'll wipe you out and everybody else. Yeah. So he goes to Abraham and says, hey, dude, how come you lied? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> that's not your sister. Right. That's your wife. Yeah. Well, and Abraham just kind of looks at him and says, well, what happened was. <laughs> Oh, Brother Gunson. 
The problem is, is that Abraham, he did not lie just once about Sarah, but he, he felt the need to lie twice. The father of faith felt the need to lie twice about Sarah being his wife. So don't think that if you see somebody who says that they are a person of faith, it does not necessarily mean that they operate in faith in all areas. Come on. Abraham could have faith. Listen to this, everybody. Abraham at 99 years old. For Sarah, 89 years old, to get her in a tent. of Israel. The only man in the Bible that God calls a man after his own heart. He doesn't say that about Paul. He doesn't say that about anybody but David. But see, what you need to understand, the Bible says in the, uh, concerning David, it says this, 
He said, this is the words of David tonight. I am weak this day, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Sariah, be too hard for me. You see, Joab was his nephew born to his sister Zariah. And David was a great king and a great warrior, but he was a poor handler of his family. Yeah. That's all right. He said, I am weak this day, though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zariah, be too hard for me. Now this is where I have to, man, I got such a revelation about this. I, in a time when I really needed it the most. He claimed, listen sister, David claimed to be weak and anointed at the same time. He claimed to be weak. And anointed. Our belief is if we're going to be anointed, we have to be strong all the time. But not David. I was, man, I was in the, I was in the, middle of some warfare not long ago and I was really struggling and the Holy Spirit and I need to speak this word over somebody in this building right now who needs to hear I'm about to prophesy a word over your life right now the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and he said these words to me he said Steve he said, you are not under this attack because you are flawed. You are under this attack because you are favored. Yes, amen. Come on. Our first, hold on, hold on, I gotta hurry. Our belief is if we are under an attack, I must be flawed. I must have been flawed. Can I tell you, all of us are flawed. No, don't look at the other. I'm talking about you. All of us are flawed. All of us have got flaws in this middle. Come on. Like every person under the sound of my voice has got flaws in your life. But you can go, amen. But I'm telling somebody in this building tonight, uh, amen, that you have uh, been under an attack and assault, amen. But you're not under the attack because you're flawed. But you're under this attack because you're the favor of God. And the devil wants to do everything he can to stop you from moving forward into your blessing that God's got for you. And so you sit and you condemn yourself and you put yourself down and say, I'm just small. I'm just small. Stop it. You're the favor of God. How is it that we can be weak? How is it that tonight I could come into this building with almost zero energy and stand up here tonight and preach? Physically, I am spent. But whenever the anointing, yes. it destroys the yoke. Come on. Yes. And the problem, and I've had tried to help preachers tonight. 
Because I've got spiritual sons. I've got uh, eight spiritual sons that I pour into. Today I was on the phone with two of them today. Pouring into their lives. Spiritual sons of, of mine. And their wives. And, and, and I want them to understand that weakness is not the doesn't mean that you could that you're not going to be anointed. How many times whenever I pastored did I get up and didn't feel like preaching? Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Help me, Brother Miller. Yes, Help me, Brother Goza. Yes, sir. How many times have I walked out of a, a pastor's office on a Sunday? And said, the Holy Spirit, if you don't help me. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank you. Holy Spirit, I, I don't know what to do. Oh, come on. I think I got an idea, but I, I don't know the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not, I don't know. I help me, somebody. I, I, I'm not, I've got these questions, but God, isn't there something precious about the anointing of the Holy Spirit that will come to the Lord? takes over our natural and we step inside of a place of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we begin to preach the word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and after the service is over then we step out and say dear God everything that happened here today you're getting all the glory share with you a brief testimony. This woman bent over was well known to Jesus as a daughter of Abraham by calling her such. He identified her as he identified her as a precious child of God, albeit one bound with infirmity. She was a woman of faith and yet bound by lack of faith. A paradox that is all often too true. In the book of, in the month of March of 2020. On the 17th of March, I was in a revival with my very dear friend, Mike and Chris Laracy in Pearl River, Louisiana. We pull up at the IHOP after service. The people in the IHOP said, if you want to eat, you better I'll come in and eat right now because at midnight, every restaurant in Louisiana, it will be closed except for the drive through service. On the 17th of March, my world, like everybody else's world, changed forever. Forever. And all of my meetings, I was booked up almost, almost completely until the end of the of the year. And instantly, I had pastors from Oklahoma, from Texas, from Louisiana, from Mississippi, from all over the call and say we're going to have to push some revivals back. I said I understand. But every church that I had booked for the next six months except for one church sent me an offering. And yeah. Amen. I said praise the Lord for that. Yes. Yes. And uh, so 
This was in the month of March. At the first of the month of June, so you're looking at the 17th of March, May, no, April, May, June. So at the first of June, I'm going to hurry with this. At the first of June, I get a phone call from a dear friend of mine. Uh, and he pastors, uh, he pastors Toes Harbor PCG Church in Humble, Texas. In July. No, at the first of June, it says, Hey, hey, brother McKnight, how you doing? I said, Oh, I'm doing great. He said, I want to have a, a, a revival. I said, You could what? <laughs> yeah. Because he pastored in Humble, Texas. Humble is in Harris County. Harris County was the hardest hit of any county in the whole state. It's where Houston is at. And the judge of Harris had shut down all the churches. And Governor Abbott said you cannot do that. So she had to retract the closing. So he said, I want to have a, a, a revival. I said, oh, you do? Oh, yeah. I said, when you want to have it? He said, the end of July. Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, and then a miracle service on Saturday evening and service on Sunday night. I said, okay, we'll do it. I got the next to do so <laughs> let's go for it. <laughs> so I showed up at their church. I normally set up a table and sell hats and shirts and books and all kind of stuff like that. So I'm there at their church. I'm sitting on my table. He's there. And I said, so, and I tried to set everything up. And I asked him, I said, can I ask you, a few things before I go to the hotel, you should guess. I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, how many do you think we'll have tonight? He said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> he said, it may, it, may, it may be just you and me. I said, wonderful. That <laughs> is. And, uh, and, uh, and so I asked him, I said, well, I need to ask you this because, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, it was an issue. And I said, well, I need to ask you how are, are, how are we going to do the altar service? Now, you got to remember, yeah. uh, this was in July. Yeah. The virus had hit on the 17th of March. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, this is in July in Harris County, the hottest and I said, okay, I need to ask you, how are we going to do the altar service? And he looked at me and he said, I have been preaching on divine healing for the past two Sundays. I said, wonderful. He said, I, I have asked the sick to come up if they wanted to read. See healing. And he said, in the altar service, I have not worn a mask. I said, really? He said, I have not worn. And I said to him, if I said, if you're not I'm not. <laughs> he said, okay. And so I'm about to walk out and I asked him the third thing, brother, and I know I need to hurry. No, I mean her. I'm hungry. 
And so I asked him this because he had outstanding, I mean outstanding music. He had the piano, the bass, the drums, the this, the that, singers. And I looked at him, I said, okay. Are the singers and musicians of the, are they all going to be able to be here? He said, well, about that. <laughs> He said a month ago, the Holy Spirit said to me in prayer, he said, you've got rebellion on your platform. I want you to set all the musicians and the singers down. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So I have set all the singers and musicians down. And we're playing videos. And it's anointed. I said, really? Well, praise the Lord. Well, if the Holy Ghost said to sit down your musicians and singers, yeah, yeah. You, sh you better have something anointed. <laughs> I think I'm done. I'm really <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. This is this pastor. This is so uh, it started at ten o'clock on Friday night. I got there about five after seven, and whenever I pulled up on the parking lot, I had a spiritual son of mine that was outside saving me a place to park. The parking lot was packed to capacity. Amen. I'm not exaggerating. All of this is on YouTube. And so I got out and he said, yeah. He said, can you believe this? I said, well, to be honest with you. <laughs> he said, I know. So I walked in the service. There was about 150 or so there. The service on Friday night, it went till 11.30. And it, and it wasn't because I preached long. I know tonight. I, I know. <laughs> it was because of the hunger yeah. in the altar service. God. God, let us have altar service. When the hungry will come. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. On Saturday evening, I pull up about five after seven, the same exact thing. The place was packed. Glory to God. Glory to God. At 11 o'clock, the altar service is over, and I'm about to have the pastor was standing right here. And I'm, about, and I'm about to hand him the microphone. This is all on the internet. You go watch it. I'm about to hand him the microphone. And I had invited a man there and his wife named Patrick. Patrick was in a wheelchair. And he was sitting in the center aisle on the second row on the outside right there. And I'm about to hand the pastor the microphone and the Holy Spirit says to me these exact words. He said, don't forget Patrick. So I'm about to hand him the microphone like that and I go like this. <laughs> Seriously, I'm about to end. I go like this, and he goes, "Okay." And the Holy Spirit said, "Don't forget Patrick." Yeah. Oh, praise God. And I did something that night I don't normally do, in, in in my healing in His presence, miracle services. I said, "If you're here tonight and you've got faith for Patrick to be healed, I want you to come up here and help us pray for him." I don't know, there's probably five or six or so that came over. 
But I had a friend of mine there whose name was Brother Billy. Brother Billy is a big rancher in South Texas. Good friend of mine. And Brother Billy, he walked over to Patrick. Now, he's not loud like I am. He's, he's a little bit more like on the quiet side. You know? So he walks over to Patrick, and all of a sudden he said, Patrick! And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Where'd that come from? He looks at him, and he's got such an intense look on his face. And he said, Patrick, I used to be a professional bull rider. I, I rode broken bulls all around the world. Come, he did professionally in rodeos all over. And he said, I was on a fucking bull one night and that bull bucked me high. And whenever I came down, the bull had moved. And, I, and all of a sudden, he lifts up his shirt and he don't have on an undershirt. He lifts up his shirt and he said, Patrick! He said, the horn, it went in here, and it came out here. And they had to lift me up off of the horn of the bull. Rush me to the emergency room. Pull that shitty under They gave me five hours to live. They called my family. But before my family walked into that hospital room, in that emergency room, he said, I want you to understand that somebody else, they walked in to that emergency room. And his name is Jesus. Jesus walked into that emergency room. Come on, boy. He said, Jesus walked into that emergency room. And he healed me. He healed me. He said, Patrick, I'm still here today. And the old brother goes up all of a sudden. He looked at Patrick and he said, Patrick, I'm telling you the truth. Let me get up here so you can see me. He was standing there. He did his thing like this. He said, Patrick, get up out of that wheelchair. Patrick, get up out of that wheelchair. All of a sudden, Patrick, it's on the YouTube. Don't look at it. All of a sudden, Patrick began to move this leg. And then he began to move that leg. And all of a sudden, he began to stand up. I wish somebody were praying Jesus for me. All of a sudden, the healing of God and him, Patrick. And the day Patrick is still healed by the power. I want you to listen to this and I'm through. Can you go to the piano, please, ma'am? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those services became known as the humble outpouring. You go and Google it. Humble outpouring. And we had revival. For 14 days straight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't hurry. People drove for four and five hours to be in those miracle services. Even some who drove up to eight hours away. The humble outpouring where that I don't know how many were healed of cancer. I don't know how many were healed of heart disease. All kinds of miracles happened. Y'all didn't hear me. All kinds of miracles happened. 
Let me close with this. Jesus. Let me close with this and I'm through. Jesus. Jesus. Last year, in April of last year, I believe it was April of last year, my spiritual father, my spiritual father, Pastor Don Norton, he's, he's also the apostolic covering over my ministry. He sent out a text to all his spiritual sons and daughters. And he said, I went today to the physician, the doctor, and he said, I cannot speak. My throat. There's something wrong with my throat. And, I, and he said, I cannot speak for one month. I cannot speak for one month. All of a sudden, I was having to be home. And the Holy Ghost hit me. And he said, did you call him tonight? No. Oh, yeah. He said, did you call him? It was actually on, uh, I think it was on Father's Day. It was either Easter or Father's Day. No, it was Easter. Easter Sunday. Because I was home. And, uh, and I was home. And I sent him a text. And I said, can I call you tonight at 6 o'clock and pray for you? The Holy Spirit spoke to me to call you tonight at 6 o'clock and pray for you. But you aren't to say a word. All you do is answer the phone. He said back, yes. Amen. At 6 o'clock, oh, brother Koza. At 6 o'clock, I called Don Norton. I've got the video of, of him sharing this Testimony. At six o'clock, I called him. He answered, and I said, "You don't say anything. I've got a word from God." Amen. And at six o'clock, I began to pray for him, and I ended the prayer by saying this: "And knowing Jesus like I do, I carry done." I ended the prayer by saying, and could you play softly, please, man? And I ended the prayer by saying, and knowing Jesus like I do, I count it done. He tests them. He testifies. He instantly felt the healing power of God. And his voice instantly got better. From that moment on, it only got better every day. And knowing Jesus like it, and everybody, will you stand with me? I went over my time tonight. And knowing Jesus, and here's how I want to end this service tonight. It's going to be very simple. If there is something in your life, in your children, whatever it is, if there's something that you need for God to straighten out, I want you to move out from where you're standing and come down to this front and stand. I don't want you to kneel. If there is something that you need for God to straighten out, I want you to come down to the front and I want you to stay across the front. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Now just lift your hands and begin to praise you. I said, just sit your
about to straighten it out. Mister, listen to me. I had to be here tonight. I had to be here tonight for you because you've been under an attack. You've been under an assault. And the Holy Spirit said, it isn't because you're flawed. It's because you're favored. And he wants to try to convince you. What's the use? What's the use? Who cares anyway? But I'm here to tell you tonight. Beginning tonight. It's going to turn around. Thank you. Thank you. And the joy is returning to your house. And this attack you've been under. Yeah. This attack you've been under, it breaks tonight. There's a greater anointing in this house, and it's breaking up for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shanda da 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 the Holy Ghost said to tell you the answer that you think the answer is is not the answer. He said he has the answer. All that other is, is just lies from the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Break up God straight God straight down. God straight down. God straight down. God straight down. If you're here and hurting anywhere in your body, if you'll start praising him right now, every bit of that pain has to leave right now. Every bit of that pain in your back, your shoulder, your knees, your legs, all over the God just start moving your shoulders, your back, your ankles, your knees right now. The heat of the morning, God's about to straighten out. God's about to straighten it out. If you were hurt, and that man just started moving your back, started doing something you weren't able to do before with that pain. In your hands, your shoulders, your neck. Yes, somebody start moving your neck right now. Hallelujah. God's about to straighten it out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus.
See you on your bicycle. And I and I just heard every time I walked by you, Holy Spirit said, say to him, ride, ride, ride. Glory. Say to him, ride, ride, ride. Because I'm oh, because I'm touching him. And he's gonna ride, ride, ride. And he's going to have plenty of energy. And he's going to have plenty of strength. I'm mounting him up on wings of eagles. And he's going to run and not be weary. And let me share with you this little bit. Pastor Goza, I'm going to tell you what happened about six months ago. I was in a church. And I had never done this before, and I ain't never done it since. But I was in a church, and the pastor hands the service to me, and instantly I begin to prophesy over him. And the Holy Spirit said, Steve, do you take him Tuesday? And you take him and his wife out to eat lunch. You pay for it. And then you go and buy him any pair of... Uh, any pair of... Of... Running shoes he wants. They ain't going to be on... The day they will be on sale. You go buy him any pair of running shoes he wants. Because I am mounting him up on wings as eagles. And he's going to run. But he needs new running shoes to run. Hey! Uh, he had a shirt made up where he wore the next Sunday that said, I got all my new running shoes. <laughs> And I saw you, and I kept hearing the Holy Ghost saying, you speak to my son, ride, ride. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. But but he said, it's time to ride again. Sorry. Hallelujah. Sorry. And I didn't know, I don't know nothing, and I, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Because, so it's for sure the Holy Ghost did I think that's a confirmation to you about something else as well. Hallelujah. 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 I want to say uh, thank you to Pastor Miller and Sister Miller tonight. Uh, I feel such a strong anointing here. And uh, I'm going to turn the service back to you, Pastor. And I do want to say a thank you tonight uh, concerning the offering. I don't have a clue. I don't discuss money for pastors. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart long ago and said to me, as long as you do my ministry, I'll provide the money. 
As long as you do my ministry, I'll provide the money. Don't ever make it about that. So I don't, and he always provides. And uh, Jerry told me he'd put a bug in here anyway. And, uh, no, I'm joking about that. I love Brother Jerry Vincent. He's one of my dear friends. And uh, I was with him a few weeks ago. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.